our justice system is way less impartial than we like to think. Adam, I'm serious. Kendra's freedom is on the line. Please stop scaring her. No, I knew it. The system is going to screw me. They throw innocent people in jail while some old lady who spills hot coffee on herself gets a million bucks. Ah, yes, the famous McDonald's hot coffee lawsuit. That case was terrible, but not for the reason you think. In fact, everything you've heard about it is wrong. <sighs> Tell me, what do you think happened in that case? So there was this greedy lady, and she was all, I want money. My ethics are questionable. So she gets a coffee at McDonald's. But she's like, I'm too dumb to know that coffee is hot. And she's driving all crazy, and she spills a little on the left. <laughs> then she's all like, boo-hoo! I'm suing McDonald's. I deserve money for being stupid. And now she's a millionaire and probably owns the Clippers or whatever. Oof, sorry, all of that is wrong. The facts, the outcome, and especially that voice. Hey, a strong choice is better than no choice at all. Here's what actually happened. Stella Liebeck was a 79-year-old woman whose grandson drove her to McDonald's. She was in a parked car holding hot coffee in her lap when it spilled. Now, Stella openly admitted that the spill was her mistake, but the results were horrifying. She had third-degree burns on her legs and genitals, and she went into shock. She had to undergo painful skin graft operations, and her surgeon said it was one of the worst cases he had ever seen. Stella was permanently disfigured and nearly died. Third-degree burns? How was that possible? No one serves coffee that hot. You're right, only a clown would. The reason Stella's injuries were so severe is that McDonald's was serving coffee at up to 190 degrees. That's almost boiling. McDonald's themselves even admitted that at that temperature, their coffee was a hazard. In fact, in the decade prior, over 700 people notified McDonald's that they had been burned by their coffee. Holy crow. The real irony is Stella didn't even want to go to court. She just wanted McDonald's to help pay her $20,000 in out-of-pocket medical expenses. But after making her wait for six months, they only offered her 800 bucks. Stella tried to get McDonald's to settle. She even agreed to mediation, but McDonald's wouldn't budge. They gave her no choice but to go to court. So when the jury heard Stella's story, they found that McDonald's had acted so irresponsibly, they had to be punished. They burned 700 people? This has got to stop. Let's find them two days coffee sales. That's 2.7 million. That ought to teach them a lesson. It does, robble, robble. <laughs> and it worked. In the end, Stella settled for less than 600 grand, but that was enough to get McDonald's to lower their temperature and stop burning people. This was an incredibly rare case where a working class victim actually beat a huge team of corporate lawyers and made the world a better place. Wow, how do I not know about this? Because those corporate lawyers are really good at their jobs. They spent years running a disinformation campaign to convince Americans that there was an epidemic of frivolous lawsuits, and the media bought it. It seems she was holding a cup between her legs while driving. Now she claims she broke her nose on the sneeze guard at the sizzler, bending over looking at the chickpeas. You get me one coffee drinker on that jury, you gonna walk out of there a rich man. <laughs> Plasma getting bigger, Jesus getting smaller, spill a cup of coffee, make a million dollars. And because of this false narrative, the witch hunt against frivolous lawsuits continues to this day. Coffee's hot, suing's not, lawsuits never should be brought. Coffee's hot, suing's not. Wow, they're really mad. Except that that anger is not real. These protests have been organized and sponsored by large corporations. Kendra, this is Michael McCann. He's a professor of law and politics at the University of Washington and a co-author of Distorting the Law. Kendra, for the last several decades, large corporations, afraid of being sued for making unsafe products, created front groups like Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse to try and turn public opinion against lawsuits. This included companies like Pfizer and Texaco, and big tobacco companies like Philip Morris. Philip Morris? Yeah. And by spreading this false story, they got everyone to believe that silly lawsuits were rampant. And nothing could be further from the truth. The best social science evidence shows that the number of personal injury lawsuits in recent decades has declined. And the median payout is only $55,000. Uh-oh, they smell the money. I better get out of here. Bye. Thanks, Michael. These mother falcon companies dragged an old lady through the mud so that we wouldn't be able to sue them anymore? Yeah. 
This story is insane. McDonald's had a policy that almost killed someone and it took Stella's lawsuit to change it. She should be considered a hero, but because of these companies, we treat her like a punchline. Okay, are you two done talking about civil court cases? Because Kendra's case is in criminal court. It's a completely different system, one that I happen to know quite a bit about. She has a great case, and the jury's gonna be very responsive to it. Oh, there are a ton of problems with jury trials. If you do another act, I swear to go. Sorry, it's happening. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Adam here. If you like that, be sure to watch new episodes of Adam Ruins Everything every Tuesday at 10 on True TV.